So it's only been 48 hours since the Unicron news has dropped from HasLab and the drama across the message boards, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the memes, it has been intense what has been going on in reaction to this. And I've had like a good amount of time now to kind of really think about it. And there's a lot of little things that I really want to address about people's reactions and and the justifications of it, and and even you know some of the overreactions, and really give a logical take on what's going on with all of this. <clears throat> My voice is still kind of gone from TFCon. I apologize for that. Uh, I will dive into the new, also uh, the, the news of the rainmakers that uh, popped up yesterday, but I felt that this was kind of more important to talk about first, since. Uh, there's pretty much a countdown when it comes to this. Now, <clears throat> what's going on right now is a lot of people are complaining about the price and how, you know, there should be payment plans and this is really going to be tough for a lot of people. And I get that. And I get that a lot because, I mean, it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But the funny thing is, is on the flip side of it, especially coming off of TFCon, seeing how much money past hands that weekend from individuals. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> you wouldn't be surprised how many times I saw people who would be walking out of the deal room with two masterpieces in their TFCon tote bag, you know, and it'd be like, oh, there's a Dinobot and a G1 version 2 Megatron masterpiece in that bag. And that's a Unicron right there in price when you really think about it. So... It's something that people need to really think about from what I call the countdown to the long game. Now, assuming, and I'm saying assuming here because information is still kind of vague, but assuming that the only way we're going to be able to get this Unicron is if you jump in on this 8,000 you know, crowdfunding backer project, <clears throat> and if you're not part of it, it's... Uh, going to be your missed opportunity that if you're not part of this this project if you didn't back it you know during this 45 day period that's it there's going to be no other opportunity to get it out you know until going into the secondary market that makes people nervous because then they can't play the long game a lot of times when i talk about you know oh you should wait you should wait and it's true because when you could wait it means you could play the long game when you see those, you know, expensive siege toys, you could wait and play the long game because sometimes those siege toys will be on store shelves one month, two months, three months. If you're in some of those more big box liquidation places, four and five months, you know, it's it's something that they make thousands of them. Actually, thousands is an understatement. Tens of thousands of them. There's so many people buying them. The the the, the secondary market is strong and then when you even look at the more higher tier items let's talk about masterpiece or let's say like a san diego comic-con exclusive or something that might also run you sometimes two hundred dollars you could still play the long game on those because there's so many numbers of them so many people buy them and they kick around in the secondary market and with the case of Masterpiece, let's say, you know, there's there's a long game with those. And then sometimes they do a reissue of a Masterpiece and then they reissue it and they want to include a coin this time around. There's there's always a an opportunity with all the other product with Transformers that has existed up to this point. It's very rare that there's something that's a flash in the pan, you know, like even back in the day with Bacon. And I'll get into, like, say, the BotCon and the SDCC stuff when it comes to exclusives and, and the nervousness that would come from even that stuff, in that a lot of those stuff in the past um, has been subject to what I call the regret purchase or the, the change of mind purchase, which is people buy BotCon exclusives or SDCC exclusives for $200, $300. BotCon box sets were hitting as high as $400 right out of the gate when you purchased it, you know? Primus package and all of that, $400 right there. But then, as time progresses and time passes, people then unload on that product. They get rid of their BotCon box set. They put it on the secondary market. They put it on eBay. 
sometimes less than what they paid for it, depending on which box set it was. Um, sometimes people like same thing with their San Diego Comic Con exclusives. Like we'll have stuff like I'm I'm just reminded I'm looking at my shelving. Like we have like the Titanium series. They had a San Diego Comic Con exclusive Menasaur. And that was selling for, I believe it was sold at SDCC for thirty nine ninety nine American. And now I would find it like, you know, loose sometimes back in the day. I mean, I haven't seen one since, but I used to see them kind of loose for like $20. Um, people don't sometimes just, they get it, they get into the hype, they get worried because it's an exclusive and then they just, you know, get bored with it and they put it out there because, eh, it was just a black Rodimus repaint called Menasaur from Titaniums from a, a line that really doesn't, you know, stand up in today's engineering and uh, quality of product or scale even to some of my other, you know, displays for, some, for that individual. But this is different. Getting back to Unicron now. This is a whole different animal. Like, I want to compare it to, think about anyone, like, think about... I'm I'm speaking to the individual here, whoever is listening. Think about how much you probably spent on Siege since it's come out. Would you say that you've spent up to $500? For some, probably. If you probably picked up everything that more or less Siege has had, you've pro you're probably already past that. When you really think about what you paid with tax and everything. I'm not talking about your gas to get there. I'm not talking about, you know, anything else. I'm talking about just you walked into Walmart or wherever... And you picked up everything that you liked from Siege up to this point since it's been since it was dropped on us. And you've probably spent more than five hundred dollars already. But the thing is, is how many of you are gonna five years from now want some of that product still or keep it or not sell it on the buy sell trade forums or <clears throat> or anything of that manner? Because I'll tell you something as someone who runs the charity auction at TFCon. There was a lot of Titan Return stuff donated this year. A lot. So it really tells me a lot sometimes about how people... And that's just the charity auction. I also see it on Google group, Not Google Groups. Facebook Groups with the Buy, Sell, Trade. On TFW 2005's Buy, Sell, Trade forums. People buy just as quick as they sell. And they buy it at brand new MSRP... And then they resell it for considerably less than what they paid. And when you really look at it in the big picture, like some guy who would buy all those Titan returns, $19.99 plus $19.99 plus $19.99 plus $19.99, which is 80 bucks, more or less, plus tax, you're almost talking 100 And then a year from now or two years from now, it ends up in the TFCon charity auction, and that hundred is pretty much down the toilet now but let me ask you this how many people pretty much ditched their primus or their unicron how many people ditched you know the big ticket items how many people really ditched those things and when i mean primus or their unicron i mean like whatever your unicron was if you got your armada one or your amazon platinum one or your 2010 one that mold <clears throat> how many of those people unloaded on that or they kept it in the long game you know that that unicron toy you know it came out in 2003 you know we're talking like 16 years ago and yet so many people it's still a part of their collection but so many people have gotten rid of their prime toys a lot of their early movie toys you know so much stuff that has come way afterwards some people have gotten rid of even like their cybertron their energon toys but they kept, they kept their centerpiece Unicron because of its, how iconic it is and how important it is and how it's a centerpiece of their collection because it's that important 1986 character, even if it's based off the Micron version. So once again, going back to this Unicron here, we have this countdown, 45 days, 44 days, 43 days. We have this big price of... 500 to 600 dollars now and you ask yourself is it too much are we spending too much here or are we have we always been spending this much we just haven't noticed it because it's always been in bite-sized little portions 
And despite the fact that we've been spending that, the items that we've been spending that $500 on, we have less of a connection to it and we seem to get rid of it and we don't really think much about it. But yet when something really important comes along, something really special, this is like, to, to put it lightly, this is masterpiece Unicron. This is what it is really in the end. I mean, that's the best way to, to label it. They could have called it Masterpiece Unicron. They didn't have to call it Transformers War for Cybertron, you know, Unicron. This is Masterpiece Unicron, in my opinion. And I think I'll, I almost feel like I think if they would have labeled it like that, maybe the flack would have been less too. But the point being is that, I th- you know what, I honestly feel that maybe when this gets, if, if and when this gets released in Japan, if it does happen, Maybe they'll call it that, just like they've done with some previous movie toys where we had them as leader classes in uh, in America and they would release them in Japan as masterpieces. But either way, point is, is that you have to understand that from a, a wallet standpoint for yourself, you need to do some self-reflecting and think about what you've spent on Transformers up to this point. And everyone is different. Some people only pick up maybe one figure a month and it's just that one figure they like and it's $14.99, you know, of a scout class or something or, and they just keep it simple. And that guy, that guy I could sympathize with because then when we're talking about the Unicron, that's a tough, that's a tough pill for him to swallow. But that guy is one thing, but the majority of the guys that I normally talk to, deal with, these are the guys that they spend $500 on stuff a month almost consistently. You know, like, give an example, the Transformer TCG, like, the people that I see that just buy booster boxes at $120, like it's nothing, and crack those packs and don't even get their value back, really, when they crack those packs open. You know, they spend $120 on a booster box, they open it up, and they maybe get, maybe if they're lucky, $70, $80, in value from the cards and you and you know and I know and I've talked about this on the podcast five years from now if the TCG dies those cards aren't going to be worth anything even close to that they won't even be worth the cardboard they're printed on so but five years from now that Unicron if it does happen how many of you think that that's ever going to be something that becomes pennies to the dollar it won't be So it's something that people really need to stop, meditate, think about their situation, think about their money situation, their spending situation, and they could pivot. They could move. TFCon weekend, again, how many people this past TFCon weekend spent more than $500? I guarantee a lot of people did. I guarantee it for sure. I ain't talking about your hotel and food, although I guarantee that just if you counted, I think almost everybody, if they just counted their hotel and food, that's Unicron right there, let alone just going into the deal room, let alone your TFCon registration, you know? So it really is something that you got to think about, like I always say, how the money moves. Think about how the money moves. Think about how money moves in your life on a monthly basis. And then that could truly tell you if this is something that could actually work for you instead of just reacting. And I'm not trying to be negative at people here, but it's something that I'm, I'm seeing so much thrown at me this past like 24 hours and the reactions and the negativity and the positivity and, and then people arguing. And I just felt that I had to sit down and just put the microphone in front of me and talk about this because this is something that I have done as a panel many years ago at TFCon talking about how you got to think about how you could spend money within Transformers and be smart about it because there's so much there's so much wrong information being given out and negative information being given out from people about how to collect Transformers and how to do it you know people look at my collection and how massive it is and how insanely huge it is and how it's almost on a completest nature but let me tell you something I did most of that back in the day working at Burger King. Like, and this was like 15 years ago. And when I was working at Burger King 15 years ago, how did I pull that off? I'll tell you why. Because I knew how to play the game. I knew how money moved. I knew when to buy, when, when not to buy, when to wait. And I learned and I honed that through all those years. And this is one of these cases where I'm taking that experience that I've, I've, 
gained all those years. And now I'm looking at that Unicron and I'm going, how is this going to work? What's the long game on this one? Because, you know, imagine you're the guy who bought MP10 Optimus Prime and you spent 500 bucks on a scalped one because you know that thing was getting scalped like crazy when that hit, you know, retail, even here in America. People were spending $400, $500 on a masterpiece MP10 Optimus Prime. And how many of those people now are now looking at MP44 Convoy 2.0 and going, I can't wait to get that one? Where's your long game on that? Barely five years and now you're already ditching your previous Prime. Now I challenge to you, how many people are going to buy this Unicron and then five years from now there's going to be something that's going to be like an MP44 that's going to replace it? Honestly, because of how high this price point is for this Unicron and how big it is, I don't see it happening. I don't see Hasbro five years from now going like, hey, remember that Unicron you bought from HasLab? Well, now we made one the size of a car that's $1,000, you know? I think that this is going to be pretty much the peak for this character and why the crowdfunding thing is necessary. Yeah, sure, maybe third party might do something on a similar nature and of a similar height and size, but you also know it's probably going to be as expensive, if not more. And it won't have that, you know, Hasbro Takara blessing on it, which to some people is important, to others it isn't. But again, think about that. Think about that. Think about the long game here. And I know that one of the biggest criticisms is the countdown, that you really only have less than 40 days to think about it. And if you don't, at least from my perspective, if you don't, you might miss out. And then you're going to be screwed because of the secondary market and how it's, you know, if you want to get one, it's whoever's willing to part with theirs and make a profit with it. So take a step back, take a breather, and really think about how you move money in your fandom and in your collection. And if you're one of those guys that when you really think about it, you spend 400 to 500 a month on retail stuff that you might not even touch and or care about in a couple of years, maybe Unicron is for you because it's the one item that five years from now you're going to turn from your computer desk, look over and go, I'm really glad I picked that one up. And then you're going to look at that spot where your Siege Optimus used to be five years ago, and it's not there anymore. And you go, oh, yeah. I sold that at, uh, at a swap meet. And then you'll understand. That's just what I wanted to say. So this is Proto Man, just giving my little take on it. And uh, I hope you guys really uh, take something from this and helps you decide, because I know I'm going to be getting in on this, but it's because I see the long game. Thanks, guys, for everything. <laughs>